I mostly uh, cared about Stephanie Miller's show, Beloved, so when I tuned in and saw that you, on Final Word and Rachel Maddock, were not panicked because you took the J&J vaccine, I was like, it's fine. It's fine. Six people out of yeah. seven million. It's going to be yep. fine. It's going to be fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I. this is what we're fighting mm-hmm. already is vaccine hesitancy. And, it, you know, it, it, it's. I, I'm glad they erred on the side of caution because treating this blood clot with a traditional way, treating this blood clot with a traditional way, could make it worse, you know, uh, rather than, you know, you know, uh, rather than, you know, if it, if it happened this way. But again, six out of seven million is is right. take us through Were you guys freaked out and what and how did you how did you move through that? Well, you know, what happened was for me, I had a moment, the moment I was like, oh, please. Oh, oh it's my shot. Oh, no. And then <laughs> because that's everybody's fear. Right. We all mm-hmm. have that. Yeah. But the reality is, when you look at the numbers and you you compare the statistics, you know, six people out of close to seven million, yeah. you 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 can be like, okay, it's going to be okay. And the reality is, is that Angela and I had had our shot, you know, almost a month ago now, right, right Angela? Right. Like, oh, yeah, a little over three weeks. So yeah, over three yeah. weeks. Yeah. So figured if it was gonna happen, if something was gonna happen, it probably. I didn't mean to be selfish, already. but I was like, is Frangela and Rachel Maddow okay? Okay, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we were and saying smoking, on, I, smoking, birth control, having COVID, it's like sixteen percent chance of I, getting a, a blood clot. I yeah. have more personal friends that have died from clots because of COVID than have died from the totality of the J and J vaccine so right yeah i'm sorry Mm -hmm. no no that's okay and so it's like take take the vaccine it it, there's you know very very little risk yeah yeah well and i here's this happens to be in travis's uh fresno who is uh yes it's saying fresno to the vaccine which is why travis was Mm -hmm. able to get vaccinated up there um (laughs) but this is where we're we're gonna hit this wall everywhere for angela and this is the bigger problem about 28,000 doses of, of COVID vaccine allocated to Fresno County this week was redirected to other counties around the state because of a significant drop in demand uh, for the shots. Remember, we did this story that we're going to hit this wall sooner than people think. And here we are. We actually reallocate about 70 percent of our doses to other counties. We don't want to be holding on to doses we don't necessarily need. The slowdown raises the prospect that the COVID pandemic and its effects could be prolonged in Fresno if the virus is able to continue spreading among people who have not been vaccinated. One doctor there said it's just Groundhog Day. We'll never end this pandemic unless people are protected. And the best way to get people protected is to get them vaccinated. The vaccines are the light at the end of the tunnel. Now it's up to us how long that tunnel lasts. And he, they said, what we're seeing here is demand isn't there. Supply is no longer an issue. It's really the demand. And then we have douchebags out there like, the, mm-hmm. you know, Jim Jordan, who, how much life did it give you when Maxine Waters told him to shut the <laughs> up? I mean, <laughs> did it give you life, Frangela? Oh, uh, nothing but life. And to watch Dr. Fauci uh, take him to task? Come on. Yeah. Oh, can we play? Do we have cut four or excuse me, five? Would that be five? Hang on. Where are we? What's, yes, the, what's the good one? Yes. OK, go ahead. Play that for five. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I don't want you to answer my question. The American people want Dr. Fauci to answer the well, question. But what does it have to be? Fire, sir. If you need to respect the chair and shut your mouth. Don't worry about this. We, we, we're going to handle this. And I think Mr. Jordan knows me very well. And he knows full well that we're going to handle this. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, so we just oh, opened up to wow. <laughs> we just oh. opened up to 16 and above out here in California. And as mm-hmm. this doctor said, if we want to get back to normal, this is our best shot. Pardon the pun. This is the best shortcut we have to reopening everything uh, the way we want. And it, it's just the fact that people like Jim Jordan don't get that right. Or Tucker Carlson or Fox no. News is, is just endlessly infuriating, isn't it? Yeah, and especially because I believe that all of those people have probably been vaccinated. Yeah, absolutely, and that, they and, have. And that w- what they're doing is mm-hmm. that it's just red meat, right? For their so they're like, oh, we're able to keep some energy and some anger going with this, so we're going to keep saying it while protecting ourselves. They're the worst kind of people. Absolutely, I think it's an it's evil 
You know, yeah. it's like you protect yourself and then you tell your audience that you know will blindly listen to whatever you say yeah. to not do the thing that you're do that you did for yourself. Yeah. It's evil. Your favorite, Ivanka, got uh, vaccinated and put it on social media, and uh, MAGA crowd went crazy, right? Just, no! Mm-hmm. Boo! Yeah. What are you doing? No way! <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I... Yeah! Okay. Yeah. Well, it's hypocrit- like, they're hypocrites. I mean, straight yeah. up, they're hypocrites. And it's like, if you're... Uh, it's just ridiculous that, yeah. that they're out here that, first of all, what is there one topic that you should listen to Ivanka Trump on. <laughs> no. No. Not However, even handbags, handbags and shoes, handbags. Angela. <laughs> no. Her handbags were hor- her, her Her fashion line is horrible. Like, there's yes. nothing, there's no advice to get from her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. She can't even tell you how not to date your daddy. She doesn't know. She, you just, um, she don't have no kind of information. So this was Republicans yeah. being douchebags to uh, wildly qualified people, uh, starting with uh, Jim Jordan and Dr. Fauci, but, um, is there a limit to how many times John Cornyn can be a douche in one week? Or um, John not. Cornyn grills <laughs> assistant attorney general nominee Kristen Clark about an article she wrote for her college paper, seemingly oblivious to the fact that it was satire. Um, that was just OK. First of all, she's like, well, went to Harvard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it was, a, you know, it was about right. She'd written a, a satirical piece because he said, well, you seem to write here that uh, blacks are superior to whites. And she's like. Oh. Okay, so I went to Harvard, and that was satire because it was based on a thing about the bell curve. Which, oh my god, right? I, they're just Jeez. okay. They're idiots. Number one, mm-hmm. yeah. And number two, yeah. they're crim- they're criminal, in my opinion. I don't yeah. know what you call keeping, you know, having six hundred thousand people dead and and pushing for things that can only make that number go higher. Yes, that's just criminal. Yeah. By the way, someone tw- tweeted Jordan voted against people getting tested and vaccinated. Now he's pretending to be worried about getting us back to normal. I mean, it's just I, yeah. I, I, I okay. It's really it's making me lose my shizzle. Okay, so Frangela, I we're in the middle of the um the defense rested. Um, here is. Uh, giant murderer uh, Derek Chauvin yesterday. Have you made a decision uh, today whether you intend to testify or whether you intend to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege? Uh, I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege today. So Glenn Kirshner was on talking about how I thought it was me, that the defense was just, I thought, spectacularly bad. So prosecutors recalled to the stand Dr. Martin Tobin, the pulmonologist. He rebutted some of the testimony of Dr. Fowler, who testified for the defense that Floyd suffered a heart arrhythmia. I don't whatever. They brought in carbon monoxide, all of this stuff. So closing arguments will be Monday and it will go to the jury. But I if you can't when there if we can't win in a case where there's this much evidence, the defense honestly was this bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't Mm -hmm. know what to say. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and especially with all the ex the other shootings and murders by the police swirling this around this case yeah. Yeah. right now. Yeah. It's like we've got to start fixing these these elements in our society. We, or else we're going to continue to have mobs surrounding the police department going, where is our justice? And I hope we do continue to have those. And I, I'm not going to say crowds of peaceful protesters around people's, around police stations, because the reality is that that's, we have, this has to stop. We can't even get through this trial without them shooting and killing more black people. It's like that, that alone, you're, and I, I look at the defense and yeah, in, I want to say in their defense, but it, they had a, a garbage case, right? Yeah. Like, but I don't, they did decide, I'm just, I forget the last the man's first name, Dennis Henderson, I think. Yeah. He's a, he's a commentator on MSNBC who's a former prosecutor and stuff like that. And he was saying how, you know, that you always have the ability to defend your clients with some sort of integrity or honor. And they clearly chose not to do that. Their entire yeah. defense is we're hoping you're racist. That's their defense is we're hoping you're racist and we give you Something that you can go back there and say to these other people, you can't possibly find him guilty because there was a dis- it could have been carbon monoxide poisoning. Trying to give you something to hang your racism on in that room back there. That's See, what they're counting on because they didn't mount a defense. It seems like we're at this weird inflection point. We played noted uh, Black Lives Matter protester Pat Robertson earlier, mm. who uh, 
yes. was incredulous. No, that no, someone... it's like Doctor could... King, Pat Robertson, right? Pretty much how it works. Yeah. yeah, but he was incredulous. Anyone could mistake a gun for a taser, and then also said Derek Chauvin should be under the jail. I was like, wait a minute, what's happening? And you know, at least right. we were saying we've Grandpa. never seen <laughs> we've never seen police testify against each other like we have in the Chauvin trial. And you're right, you know, Frangela. Just when it seems like there's hope, then we're, there's not just you know. I, uh, uh, oh God, I'm sorry. This is what happens is you forget names because there's so many in three days. But it's it's the yeah. um, exactly. Dante, a 13 uh, year old boy. But, and now, Toledo. right? And now the new one. Mm-hmm. It, it's just in the course of I, okay. So and Mayor Lightfoot, I uh, obviously was emotional. She's a mother. She said we must proceed mm-hmm. with deep empathy and calm and importantly peace. Uh, she talked. Her voice started breaking. She talked about the pain of losing a child to gun violence. Um, and, and this video, Adam Toledo is his name. 13. I mean. Frangela, I was saying in all these protests we went to, remember, hands up, don't shoot. Well, this yeah, kid yeah. has his hands up and they shot him. I, I don't. I yeah. Just... Fully, he was fully complying. Because this is the thing that nobody, that we, we need to start understanding and that people keep saying. But the reality is we as black people are armed by our skin. Our skin is our weapon. The minute we, our existence is criminal. And I know this because they're allowed, cops are allowed to break into our homes and shoot us to death in our sleep when we've done nothing wrong. Yeah. So they're allowed to do that. And that's called procedure was followed. So that when I look at that, I'm like, this is the world we live in. This is the world that these police are trained in and that they are trained to be okay with. And I do not for one minute believe that that woman, a 26 year veteran pulled out her gun and didn't know it was her gun. I don't believe her. I believe that they've had a meeting and they've like, when you shoot black people, start acting like it was a mistake. So we can say, oh, it was because I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I just a big yellow why, taser? I, why you don't there, know the difference between that and a black clock? But why is there even a taser involved for air fresheners? Or, He's in the front seat of the car. Right. Like It's the most ridiculous right. thing. There are three cops on him or two at that time. And I'm like, this is what you're what I'm telling you is from the minute they're interacting with black people, they start at an escalation. Yeah. cops and they go mm-hmm. higher and higher because my problem Until is we always, die. exactly nobody should be dying from a traffic stop right i mean there's and I don't, no excuse for it and again we don't know all the details in this 13 year old kid in chicago but you know whether he'd thrown a gun away or the other guy had had a gun or something but very clearly he said let me see your hands you can see in the bright light of the right he said let me see your hands hands he turned around he clearly didn't have a gun what i Okay. That cop got out of the car ready to shoot. Right, right. I mean, I just... That is the problem. But, but, he approaches, when they see black people, police officers, the first and only tool they have on their belt is their gun. Well, first of all, you can understand he's a third, why he's scared, because he's seen the last hundred yeah. videos. He's running, he's scared. But when you talk about complying, when the cop says, stop, let me see your hands, he does, and then he shoots him dead. And then you ask, why do black people run? Because he yeah. turned around and said, okay, and put his hands up so you could see, and you still shot and him. And he shot him. Right. And the reality is that you that you don't get to, the cops aren't supposed to shoot people who are running away. Right. That's not, they're, they're only supposed to use that weapon when that person is posing a threat to them, to their lives, or somebody else's, right. or their own. It doesn't matter what the stop was. It doesn't matter that you heard gunshots. It doesn't matter if you think he committed a bank robbery. You They are not supposed to even pull out their weapon. They're Unless those conditions are met. You. Well, why are they yes. treating, I mean... And they are starting at that. That's the place mm-hmm. they start. Right. I mean, it, it's in these, whether it's a kid, like the 20-year-old like with, with an air freshener. I mean, what? this has not Bin Laden or the Unabomber or D.B. Cooper. Like, what What? What are you, why is there this level of escalation or force in, in the first place? I mean, in this, how about this? In the wake of the video of the Virginia cops pepper spraying a black army lieutenant, the police chief there said his department does not need to issue an, an apology. My guys missed opportunities to verbally de-escalate. Oh, really? Uh, the, only the only the, the soldier was the one de-escalating in that situation. Yeah. When asked by a reporter if he's owed an apology, he said, I don't believe that, uh, saying he wished uh, Nazario would have complied a whole lot earlier. Um, so obviously now he's suing them and good. They're the subject of a $1 million lawsuit. One of them was the cops was fired. So it could be about the lawsuit that they're saying, oh, no, he doesn't owe an apology. But he is certainly yeah. owed an apology. Right? Absolutely. Do you know what we are and eat pavement. Yeah. For what? Yeah. For something that tags. wasn't true. For For they thought he didn't have tags and he did. Once they saw that, why are we still having the interaction? 
Thank you. Like, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, they, this is their thing. We got a black person. It's time to get to killing and arresting. Yeah. That's just it. It doesn't matter what the original issue may or may not have been there. We just talked about this week that the cops arrested a black man on the street when they had no description of who they were there to arrest. Right. They got out their cop car, saw a black person and arrested him. Yeah. I mean, the, the <laughs> like, anomaly, the anomaly in the Lieutenant Nazario case is that he's not dead. I mean, the anomaly yeah. is, thank God, you know, I, I mean, anyway. All I right. couldn't even deal with the cops shooting the 13-year-old Toledo and then asking him where he's been shot. I'm like, don't you know? You're the person who did it. Right. What do you mean, where has he been shot? Yeah. You just shot him in the chest from a, a, a distance that's ridiculous. Like, are, are you kidding? Yeah. He, he's yeah. not responding to you? Yeah, it's because you killed him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 22 minutes after the hour, we are rolling. Fridays with Frangela on the Stephanie Miller Show. <laughs> 